Hey everyone, it's Jessica and I'm excited to finally do this video about art and mental health. In the past, people have asked me, why don't you ever talk about your art? And sometimes I post pictures here and there on Instagram of my paintings, but because of Prezi Video, I finally have the technology to do this. So this is my first video on art and mental health. I'm going to do other videos in the future. This is my most recent painting and it's of the Northern Lights. I started painting again a few months ago after not painting anything for almost three years. And the Northern Lights is my favorite subject. If you don't know what they are, this is one copyright free picture of what the Northern Lights look like. Sometimes they're blue and green, uh, sometimes they're blue, green, and purple, and I've never actually seen them in person, but they're my favorite subject to paint. And it was hard uh, painting after not doing it for almost three years. I was very rusty. And so I thought I'd start, I'm gonna tell you how I made this painting. But before I do that, I wanted to show some of my paintings in the past so that you could see what my style is. And as somebody with many, many chronic illnesses, including living with chronic pain, also having bipolar disorder my whole life, painting is really important to me as an expression you know there's certain things that can't be captured in words and just like we have different coping mechanisms i've talked about exercise and mental health there's something i get from exercise there's also things i get from art that i can't get from anywhere else and so this painting of mine i just made this years ago on a day when i was happy i i call it happy i think it's a happy painting i'm really bad at naming things that's why i call it happy and this other painting of mine that I made a long time ago, this is quintessentially, this is like, if I had to choose one painting that's most me, I would say this is it. I, I call this tranquility. And I've never actually been here in person, though people have sent me pictures. It's from Canada. It's from Banff Park. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it correctly, but most of my subjects, they come from pictures in calendars or books, postcards. So I remember painting this freshman year college. I was just like, it was a nice afternoon. I was feeling good and it came so naturally to me. I love painting water, uh, getting all the different shades of water. And then I did this, this is another painting in the past. So I visited Niagara Falls and the, I'm going to show, I also did another painting of this and they're dramatically different. So I painted this when I was going through hypomania and I was feeling really good. So this painting is an oil painting, whereas the previous paintings were watercolors. And it would normally take me four weeks to finish this, but I finished it in four hours because of the hypomania. And this is the painting I just talked about in my TEDx talk. And this is a painting of the same subject, Niagara Falls, but I was feeling really down when I made it. And so it's much darker than the other painting. It's also the opposite side of Niagara Falls. But, you know, like I said, painting gives me an outlet. These emotions have to go somewhere. And this is another painting I did. And this was a really hard day. On this day, I found out that a good friend had cancer and she did she did live she made it but that same week i found out another friend had cancer who passed away last year and also uh, somebody i used to go to church with he also died of cancer that week and it was really fast it was he had less than a month after diagnosis and i didn't get to see him and so this painting to me when i'm discouraged i look at it it's about light breaking through the darkness. So you see here, the sky is dark on this side of the painting. And then slowly the light is breaking through the darkness. And that's something I learned from my friend. She wrote a letter at the time when she announced her diagnosis of the cancer. And uh, it was about having faith and her faith and how she had even if faith. And I'm, I'm really grateful this friend all these years later is still here with us. But when I'm discouraged, I look at this and it's something hard to put into words, but it's about, it's just about light breaking through the darkness. 
That's all I could say. And I don't know where this is. I got this picture from some calendar. And this is another painting of mine. I, I was feeling great that day. And it was on the night of a Pacquiao fight. So I was finishing the painting. As you know, I'm a boxing fan. Before the fight happened, and the ring entrance was always dramatic. I wanted it out of the way, uh, finishing it during the undercard. This is just uh, typical of my style. It's a watercolor painting. And this is another painting of mine. It's Christmas at Rockefeller Plaza. I made it a decade ago. And I share this because it's the maybe the hardest watercolor painting I've ever made because there's so many things going on. You're painting both landscape, there's nature. I have three different colors of the green in the vegetation. Then there's man-made stuff. There's the Christmas tree, there's the angels and the trumpets, and there's water and there's light. And I had to get the icicles, the snow, all of that. And so that, what's hard for me it makes me happy to look at this, but I also over time, because I have a neuromuscular autoimmune disease, because I have myasthenia gravis, I'm losing coordination gradually. And so I probably, I, I don't think I could, I could do this painting again, but the good news is it was a subject matter that I only ever wanted to do once, unlike the Northern Lights. So this is called Joy to the World. And a few years ago, I went through, I lost a friend and I lost her in a very traumatic way. And so I started painting again after not doing it for a few years. And this is the first time I ever painted the Northern Lights. And as you can see, it's blue, green, and purple. I got it from a calendar. I love ast astronomy. I love astrophysics. And so in 2018, I did a lot of paintings. And I did one painting in January of 2019, and then I didn't paint again for a while because I was very busy with some important things I had to do. And so flash forward to the holidays, after taking a very long break, I started painting again and I was super rusty, but still it made me happy to do it because it was more about my mental health and protecting my sanity amidst um, things going on in my life and things going on in the world. And so this was my first painting after, uh, after not painting for almost three years. It's a watercolor and it was hard to do because I was so rusty. The sky makes me happy. I wanted to do a Northern Lights with those specific colors because I had done purple, green, and blue before, but I wanted to do purple, magenta, and green and because I was rusty, I was, I was making errors that I'd never made before, including when I was a child. And so I was having a hard time correcting these errors because they involved the color black. And when you have black and watercolor, you have to be, watercolor is a really fast medium. You gotta be fast. And because it's black, it's hard to correct black. But again, this made me really happy. I made this on Christmas Eve, or I finished it on Christmas Eve. I didn't start it on Christmas Eve. And then I made another painting, and it was also of the Northern Lights, and I love the lighthouses. So, but this one, I was like still struggling with the mistakes I had made in the previous painting, but I was starting to figure out what I needed to do better. And so, but again, I was doing this for myself. And so this all leads up to uh, the next painting I made was I lost a friend of mine in February to muscular dystrophy and he was very young. So that made it hard. But this painting this one, even though I was still making mistakes with the mountains especially, which used to come really easily to me, it made me happy. It was an expression of something. It was an outlet for my grief. And dealing, you know, dealing with grief, when you lose somebody young, it's, it's always hard. And so these were like the steps. I drew it out. I did the sky first. Then I did the sky in the mountains. And then I was happy when I got to the trees because I remembered how to do trees, which used to be super easy for me. And this was fun to make. 
and I wanted to do the Northern Lights with just blue and green. And so this almost became a dress rehearsal for the next painting. And this is what the Northern Lights looks like live. Again, I've never seen it, but just in case you haven't seen it. And this is the painting I started with. So this is my most recent painting. And I'm going to talk about how I did it, materials you can use if you want to start painting, if you need an outlet for stress, or you're just curious. So this is a watercolor, and it's 9 by 12. I haven't named it yet. Like I said I'm really bad at naming things so um, it, it just made me so happy to make this painting and I, it turned out everything turned out the way I wanted it to turn out let me put it that way so step one in the painting because I was realizing my loss of coordination I decided to do a rough draft which is something I did not do in the past so this is my rough draft this is much smaller this is five what is this it's a five by five times 8.5 so this was like the dress rehearsal for the real thing and i love the way the sky turned out here unfortunately and i i i was correcting my mistakes with the black i finally figured it out what i was doing wrong a few months ago was i wasn't including enough paint to water ratio with black and i figured it out i didn't have enough area on the paper because of its size it's so small to get into the details of the mountains but I, that because of this I knew what I needed to do so that was the first step in the painting the second step I did a, I, I did this this wasn't supposed to be a draft but I did the sky and the sky didn't turn out the way the draft did and so I realized I wasn't using the same colors it was too far apart I wanted this combination of cerulean blue and this like neon green but it was coming out more navy, which is not, it like, to me, that's not magical. It's not what I was going for. So I had to start over, but that's not a problem. So I did the sky, and I love the way the colors came out here. It was, like, more whimsical, more light. The green, I love painting this shade of green. And it's, and, and then this blue, it, like, had just the right ratio, in my opinion, of the cerulean there were some navy but the navy didn't overpower the green which is what i wanted to happen so that was step three and then step four so i did the sky i wanted to the sky you could see i've drawn the mountains out and the rocks the sky had to be reflected in the water so i wanted to make sure i use the same colors you you could see where there's dark blue on one side there's dark blue reflected in the water on that side where the, you could see the green is carried over and so that was the that was the next step and then i did the mountains and so while the sky is the star of the show in this painting this subject because it is about the northern lights i would say this like the supporting character the supporting role the most important supporting role is the mountains. And so I wanted this contrast between the mountains being black, white, and gray neutral and the very colorful sky. And also, I forgot to say how I made the sky. I used, after I painted it, I used a toothbrush to splatter white paint all over it. And after I did the mountains, I finally, I did the rocks. So this was the finished product. It is a 9 by 12 watercolor, and it was important for me to get those details down, the rocks, the mount, like, just the right amount of white to highlight it, but I did not, I did not want the rocks to overshadow anything else in the painting. Um, that's like, you know, it's a supporting character, right? And so I used a bunch of brushes. I'm going to link to materials below. My favorite brand of brush is Windsor & Newton. That's the blue ones. But I added a new tool, and that's Chinese calligraphy brushes. I'm going to link to everything. And I use the Chinese calligraphy to make the sky because we needed those big strokes and needed it to flow easily. So that's a new thing I've been doing is using Chinese calligraphy brushes. Those are the two 
white, um, the brushes with the white hairs, they're very long and there's wo the wood and the black and the handle. So if you don't know, my blog is called Fashionably Ill and we're coming up on our 10th anniversary. And just like on my YouTube channel, I write, a, I, I have a lot of stuff about mental health on Fashionably Ill. There's serious articles, there's funny articles, and my tagline is surviving pain with style and humor. I'm talking about chronic physical pain, I'm talking about emotional pain. I talk about life with a handful of chronic illnesses and the URL is just my name, www.jessicahimeno.com, but you can always Google fashionably ill if you forget. And like I said, I'm gonna include links in the description box below. So links to brushes if you've never painted before or like me, you, you, were, you did something in the past, but you took a long break. So this, the painting, the final painting is here. It's on Arches. So I'm gonna include a link to Arches watercolor block. And I had never used a watercolor block before, but because my hands were not as fast as they used to be, and you need to be fast with watercolor, you, I noticed that that was the reason that the paper was curling, which is a problem I never ever had before. And I was suddenly having it in my paintings like this. So I realized to get, I needed a, a block instead of, which is heavier than paper, oh, heavier than the paper I was using. And so that's how I got this. I did this using Arches watercolor block and I'm gonna post a link to it in the description box below for the rough draft that I did, the smaller rough draft. And if you, even if you don't wanna do a rough draft, you just wanna do a painting, you could use this. And one cool thing about this is because it's smaller, that's great if you're tired. If you're tired, you know, I actually thought when I made this painting, I'm like, oh, when I did this one, the rough draft, and it came out like the dress rehearsal, I said, maybe I should make more small paintings in the future. Maybe I should do this, um, this 5.5 times 8.5. The only thing is it's hard then to get the details in the things like the mountains, uh, the branches in the trees. So it's kind of a trade-off, but it's a great place to start with art. And, wait, oh, I showed the brushes twice. I'm tired. So I'll show, I'll post a link to a basic watercolor set, especially if you're new to this. And so thank you for listening. Has art ever helped you? Any kind of art, doesn't have to be visual art, could be performing arts, could be, could be singing, could be dancing, could be acting. Has art ever helped you with your mental health? And you know, it's always good to try something new too. So for me, especially with the pandemic, I've learned about a lot of new things dur during this time. So if you're looking for a hobby, and I, I love watercolors and, um, I'm thinking I might, I might go back to doing acrylics if it's safe for me autoimmune wise, because I can't paint if I have any paper cut. So if it's safe, I'll do that. Maybe I'll do that. So anyway, thanks for listening, everyone. I hope everyone is staying safe during these times. I appreciate all of you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, please share it uh, and subscribe. Thank you very much.